The past influences us. All different aspects of the past. Time periods. When people call us Victorian dandies, that's not what we are. We're not Victorians, and we're certainly not dandies. If you're gonna be a dandy, and say you're a dandy, you better really, as Diaghilev said to Cocteau, the young Jean Cocteau, astonish me. I've been working with McDermott for 30 years almost. And at that time, we had a 19th century townhouse in East Village, and it was all decorated in 1835 to 1865. And so we said, oh, all right. And we went and bought a 8x10 camera from about 1900 and started just photographing our life. We could take a picture of anything, and it would be beautiful, because our life was so beautiful. McDermott created a world that we lived in. What we were doing with our lives and our art was experimentation in time. It was really a record of his time experiments. Because I think someone like McDermott, and he has quite a reputation of being quite eccentric, he's an original thinker. The most important thing for him is to live in the past. He does not care for anything else. The past is constantly being thrown out and thrown out and thrown out. For what? For some, you know, something new, something innovative, you know, supposedly. And so everything that's considered the greatest of today, the best of today, will just be passe. It'll be embarrassing, the haircuts, the clothes. So I never go out of fashion. We never do. I always look great. We were in this documentary, the 28th instance of June 1914, and McDermott came up with the title of it because that was the day that Ferdinand was assassinated and that First World War started the modern world. Because after the First World War, with all of these soldiers coming back and just ruined by that hideous war, they went into a whole modern society. And that documentary was the time period that no longer exists. So that was a world that was actually gone with the wind, it was destroyed. We were attacked by the government and shut down, and McDermott left America, renounced his American citizenship, became an Irish citizen. So when we started working together in the East Village, we just made paintings that we could hang in our house because we couldn't afford a painting and we made these paintings and hung them in our house. But what it was like, I found, but maybe this was different because I only knew the East Village art world. And it basically was, well, I'm having a show in my kitchen. Or someone had a bombed out space or Club 57 uh, on St. Mark's Place. And they um, would just put on a show. Someone would just hang it and then people would come in and they'd have a party. And now it just seems to me more of people having a strategy. I won't do this, I'll do that, and they strategize themselves, and it does work for them. I just don't think it's very exciting. See, the funny thing is, we backdate all of our artwork. So if it was ever lost in the world, that people would think it was an antique. Because in art, there's no limitations. You can work with whatever you want, that's what's so great. But when you think of art, and I look at art, you know, I see a lot of sculptures that I say are made out of cement, pom-poms, and string. When the bomb hits and everything's blown up, and there are the people digging through the rubble, are you really gonna pull out a sculpture that's made out of cement, pom-poms, and string? Or are you gonna pull out something that's beautiful and hang it in your bombed out cave or house and try and make a life for yourself? I always think that's a funny way of looking at art. <laughs>